For years, gaming laptops have had the reputation of being thick and heavy tanks. Along with the overly flashy accents and design language choices, gaming laptops were basically reserved for a very specific demographic. Despite the impressive performance that many of these machines achieved, there was just far too many sacrifices in other areas such as battery life and portability to make gaming laptops appeal to a wider audience. That, however, has basically all changed. For a few years now, several laptop manufacturers have started to design thinner and more understated laptops, with the G14 by Asus taking one of the biggest steps at bridging the gap between gaming PC performance with sleek and elegant exterior design. Let's explore why Asus advertises the G14 as the most powerful 14-inch gaming laptop. Chassis-wise, the G14 measures at 32.4cm wide, 22.2cm long and 1.79cm tall. It isn't the tiniest 14-inch laptop on the market, but careful considerations were made to the dimensions in order to accommodate a fully-fledged AMD Ryzen CPU and Nvidia's RTX 2060 Max-Q GPU. Most laptops with these kinds of dimensions must rely on slower ultrabook grade internals as simply cooling becomes an issue in such a compact space. So one of the ways Asus has been able to fight the cooling problem is with the Ergo lift hinge. When the G14 is closed, it looks like any other laptop. However, once you open the laptop, the rear is automatically lifted. Not only does this aid cooling, but it also improves the ergonomics for typing, as the keyboard is pointed more towards you as opposed to being completely flat. The keyboard is also very tactile, with each keystroke giving you a very positive response. Since the laptop doesn't have the extra number pad for obvious reasons, keys such as home, insert and end do not exist, which is definitely something to keep in mind if you regularly use those keys. Along with the dedicated volume and mute buttons, the keyboard layout is very easy to familiarize, which makes typing a very pleasant experience. Here's how the keyboard sounds. The backlighting of the keyboard is rather poor however, some keys just seem less lit than others, and the overall illumination just isn't great. I've heard that this is more of an issue with the Mirage White G14s, however it's still one of the most disappointing things of this laptop. The power button also acts as a fingerprint reader. It's able to cache a fingerprint when you press the button on startup, logging you onto Windows directly. Initially, it wasn't very accurate. Though once I installed the driver update, it seems to have gotten better. A link for that driver will be in the description. The touchpad is also very accurate. Although it looks a little small, it's perfectly functional. The only thing that I'm not a fan of is the hollow clicking sound, but I guess that's very subjective. The speakers are also good. You've got two openings at the top and bottom of the laptop, and this is what they sound like. Ah uh, ah, uh, my check, money.
performance is one of the most important traits of the G14, and it's very impressive what it's able to achieve. I haven't had the chance to try many games, but GTA 5 Online, with its dense city landscapes and populated player base, was not a problem for the G14, easily averaging over 60 FPS on max settings. For content creators, photo compositing, video editing, or even 3D rendering was easily dealt with by the G14. Again, a testament to the new Ryzen CPUs working in tandem with the RTX 2060. For certain games, you may want to lower the graphic settings to take advantage of the 120Hz screen, which truly makes not only gaming, but the whole Windows user experience buttery smooth. It's a matte screen, which reduces glare and makes it easier to view for longer periods of time. I've seen some reviews regarding screen ghosting due to the response time. However, I didn't notice any issues, and I don't think most people will without specifically looking for it. The G14 also does a spectacular job with battery life. With its 76 watt hour battery, most people will be able to bring this thing to school or work without worrying about taking the charger. Additionally, this laptop can also be juiced with a Type-C USB cable, albeit only at 65 watts instead of the 180 watts supported by the wall charger. Up to this point, I've mainly talked about the positives of the G14, but it's not a laptop without its flaws. For starters, the G14 houses very powerful processors inside a very small package. This therefore directly affects the noise outputs of the G14. On idle, browsing the web, watching videos, the fans are not very audible. However, once you start to run some more intensive tasks, such as gaming or video rendering, the fans fully kick in and it becomes rather irritating, to a point that I almost recommend wearing headphones because the noise is just super unpleasant. I also encountered a few problems with the Wi-Fi connectivity on the G14. My Wi-Fi would go down very persistently whenever the G14 was connected to it. However, after installing drivers directly from Intel's website, the problem seems to have disappeared. A link for the driver is in the description. The other issue I've experienced was that the laptop would randomly turn black screen whilst I'm using it. The laptop is technically still on, but won't respond to any inputs besides for shutdown. My G14 has since received a few updates, and so far I haven't experienced any of those random black screens, so fingers crossed that it has been successfully patched. Besides these issues and the fingerprint sensor being a bit dodgy at times, the G14 is a very powerful laptop that doesn't scream gamer. With its magnesium alloy body, the build quality is superb, and in the moonlight white colour, the G14 doesn't attract many fingerprints. For those that need a toned down professional looking laptop with one of the most powerful hardware available today, the G14 is truly a worthy contender.